Hello, everyone. Welcome to another webinar of our Rocky Web in Action webinar series. My name is Guilherme Turezo, and I'm part of the Rocky DM support team. Today, we are going to make a short presentation about separators and screener devices, and also show how to we can use DM simulations to improve these equipment and their operating conditions. I hope you enjoy. Well, screeners in, in many in the industrial applications, the particles that compose the bulk material can vary in size and shape. The size variation we call particle size distribution, also known as PSD. In most cases, it is interesting to separate a wide range of particle size distribution to smaller ranges of sizes. For this purpose, we can apply screeners and separators. These devices are fundamental for particle transportation, also for, for particle transportation because we can separate particles of different sizes and it's easier to handle the book material or even to separate the, part the particles of interest. With Rocky, we can account to high fidelity particle shapes and wide particle size distributions, which can increase assimilation accuracy. There's a huge variety of screeners and separators. In most cases, these devices have vibrating motion applied and they work with a certain feed capacity. These parameters can vary depending on the material that's being handled but they still play a big role when it comes to efficiency and equipment spore consumption. Now that we already know how these devices work, we can talk about its industrial applications and show and how they can be modeled inside Rocky. Sorting and screener devices are found in many industries, being often spotted at mining sites, for uncrushed rocks and fragment segregation. We can also find in metal industries for ores and coke segregation, in pharmaceutical to separate fragments or dust ta from tablets or end quality control, in the food industry and agriculture for raw material quality control, and as well for other industries. In industrial applications, the sorting efficiency and the material mass flow are always expected to be optimized, both for quality and productivity purposes. With these objectives in mind, we can optimize these devices through DEM simulations in Rocky by changing the screener inclination, mass flow, vibration amplitude, and frequency. We can obtain critical information about its performance. In this example, with the same mass flow and inclination, we can only change vibration frequency and obtain very different results in efficiency and geometry wear. You can see here that the 15 Hertz is the most efficient, efficient frequency for this device. In today's session, we are going to show how we can set up a DM simulation of a vibrating screener and do some post-processing analysis in Rocky. We can begin importing the screener geometry and then we will configure its vibrating motion. We'll also create a particle size distribution. Next, configuring a particle injection and the domain limits. Once the setup is done, We'll run the simulation and show how we can extend it for a few seconds. Then we will show a cube process for particles, how to add custom curves for post-processing. And finally, we are going to create expressions inside time plots and configure a histogram for efficiency analysis. Starting our demonstration, we can start from uh, naming our study. We're going to do a vibrating screener. And later we can choose the rolling resistance model and also set a numerical softening factor. Next, 
we just import our screener geometry. We save the file and choose its unit. We drag and drop the geometry into the 3D view and we can visualize the geometry. We can change its color. We can unselect the bounding box and also change the font color, also background color if wanted. Next, we create an inlet. In this inlet, the particles will be injected. For this, for this inlet, we need to center its coordinates and also select its dimensions. Later, we create a motion frame for the vibrating motion. The vibrating motion will be applied on the screener. But for this, we have to select a relative rotation vector and rotate in order to vibrate in the, in the desired direction. We select the periodic translation, set 15 Hertz, the amplitude of one centimeter and its direction. Next, we link the motion frame to its geometry. With the motion preview, we can visualize how the geometry is moving. Now we can see that the motion vibration is applied. And next, we go to the material properties. In this demonstration, the materials for boundary and particles will set as default, as well as for their materials interaction. Next, we go to particles, we create particle, and also we can create a particle size distribution. By setting its size and the cumulative percentage in Rocky, we can set a very precise particle size distribution. After setting a particle size distribution, we can go to the rolling resistance factor and set our rolling resistance to our particles. Next, we create a con continuous injection input. We select our entry point, that will be our inlet, the time that will, the particles will be injected, which particle will be injected, and its respective mass flow rate. Next, with the domain settings, we'll we will edit the domain so we can optimize the domain dimension to our screener. This way, we can speed up the simulation. As our particles leave our screener, the particles will also leave the domain, and then they won't be accounted for further calculations. We can see in our 3D view that the domain is very optimized. And with this, we can follow with our starting our simulation. We set our simulation duration, the output frequency, and we can start. In case if the simulation duration is not enough, we can stop the simulation with the button stop, and we can extend it for a few seconds. And later one just clicking on resume. We can resume the simulation. Great, we just set our simulation and now it is done. Now we can do our post-process, our post-processing for our simulation. We can see that our particles were injected all the way on our screener. And from our particles, we can create a queue process. This queue process will be uh, for the region that is under our screener. We will name it as underflow region. We will rotate as the screener is rotated. We'll center and also select its magnitude. We see in the 3D view now that a cube 
is right under our screener. We can also create a process cube for our overflow region. This overflow region will take into account the particles that leave the screener on the top. We can see on our 3D view. And now from the particles, we can create a property. From this property, we will uh, calculate the undersized particles that are being injected in our screener device. We can set the range size of these particles from zero to 0.18 meters. And later do the same for the oversized particles and set the range of its size from 0.18 meters to 0.5. Next, in the overflow region, we are going to do the same thing. We create a property, the oversized particles in overflow, and select the particle size from 0.18 meters to 0.5. For our efficient efficiency analysis, we are going to create a custom curve. This custom curve will sum all the mass that is in a certain region. We will call it as total mass in. Our output unit will be kilograms and our variable will be particles in mass. In the custom expression, we'll uh, write the cumulative sum of the particles in mass and click OK. We can see now that this curve is created. And by selecting the previous processes that we created, we can plot this custom curve in a new time plot. And now in each region, in each property, we can see the total mass that is uh, in our simulation. And now we can do efficiencies for the undersized for the uh, underflow, that is the total mass in the underflow divided by the undersized particles in feet, and also the efficiency for the overflow, that is the total mass in the overflow region divided by the total mass of the oversized particles in feet. For obtaining the global efficiency, we just need to multiplicate these uh, last two efficiencies, and now we have a global efficiency of 88.4%. Now that we know already our efficiency, we can analyze the particle size distribution. From particles, we can do a part of PSD that is related to the particles that is being feed, fed on the screener and also on the overflow region. We can analyze the particle size distribution on the overflow. By selecting these two properties, we can go to the particle size and create a histogram. In this histogram, we'll select the weight of the, of the histogram bins as a particle size. We'll increase the number of bins let them cumulative and show as percentage. With this histogram, it will be possible to analyze the particle size that is being uh, gathered on the overflow region compared to the particle size distribution that is being uh, injected on our screener. Well, that's the end of our today's uh, demonstration of the Rockies interface. We can go uh, further in our uh, presentation of how Rocky can uh, benefit, how you can benefit of these results. And these results will help you to determine the material mass flow injection in your screener or, or separator. You can find the best inclination for a device. 
These results will allow you to determine the vibrating amplitude and frequency operations. They will help also to evaluate the hole sizes and of course the region prone to material accumulation, also known as clogging. And beside all that, these results will calculate the sorting efficiency, will determine the screener length, prospect worn regions due to material flow, evaluate the particle size distributions obtained by the screener or sorting, and much more. Now, uh, it's the end of our today's session, and I would like to invite you all to attend our next 15-minute webinars that will take place in our upcoming, upcoming weeks. The next one will be on September 1st about bucket elevators. Well, see you there, and thank you everyone for attending our today's session. Please connect with us through one of our channels. And if you have any question, please send us in the chat. A survey will be forwarded to you after this webinar. And uh, we're waiting uh, in case of any questions. Thank you.